Okay, now that we've got the ability to issue our users a token, what we're going to do now is add the authentication middleware so that we can actually authenticate user requests. So we'll head back to VS Code and what we'll do first of all is we'll head over to our users controller and what we can do to ensure that our endpoints are protected with authentication is add an authorized attribute. And what we can do, if I say to our get user, what we'll do is we'll add an authorize attribute here, and we'll need to bring this in from Microsoft ASP.NET Core authorization. And now our get user endpoint is protected. And what we can also do is say allow anonymous for our get users. And we'll just use this to compare the two different requests to see what we get back in Postman. So let's head over to Postman and let's issue the request for the getting of users and I'll click on send and our users we allow anonymous so we can get our users back from the server and if I try and get an individual user and click send then this time we get an error telling us that no authentication scheme was specified and there's no default challenge scheme found so what we need to do is add some middleware so that we can authenticate with our JWT token. So let's head back to VS Code and what we'll need, let's just close all of these down, we're going to need an additional NuGet package to do this. So I'm just going to open the NuGet gallery once again. And this time we're looking for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core and authentication. And what we want from this is the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core authentication JWT bearer by Microsoft. So I'm just going to select this one and go ahead and install it. And once this is installed, we can obviously make use of it. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to head to our startup.cs class. And this is where we're going to add our middleware. But first of all, we need to add a service for our authentication. So I'm going to say services and we're going to say add authentication. And then we specify the authentication scheme inside here. So what we'll do is we'll say JWT bearer defaults and we should be able to bring this in from authentication JWT bearer that we just installed and then we say period and authentication scheme. Then after this we chain on some configuration. So what we're going to do is say add JWT bearer and this takes some options and inside here, we're going to say options, and then we su supply the token validation parameters. And what we'll say is new token validation parameters. And we need to bring this in from using Microsoft identity model tokens. And then we give it the options we want. So first of all, we need to validate the issuer signing key. Our server is going to sign the token and we need to tell it to actually validate this token is correct. Then we need to give it the issuer signing key and we'll say this is a new symmetric security key. And then we once again specify the encoding type. So we'll say encoding utf8 and we'll need to bring in encoding from system.txt and then we'll say get bytes and then we can pass in our config and access the token key and add a comma after this and then we're just going to add a couple of additional flags and we're going to say validate issuer and we're going to set this to false and we're going to say validate audience and we'll also set this to false as well. Just to keep our configuration simple, the issuer of the token is obviously our API server and the audience of the token is our Angular application just now. We could add these properties and validate against these as well. But our main concern here is that we can authenticate our users with a valid token and these two flags do just that. And we just need to add semicolons to the end of these statements. And then what we need to do, and we're going to add some more middleware here, so the ordering is very important, and what we need to add, just above the app.useAuthorization, is app.useAuthentication. 
and we don't need to supply any additional configuration there. But the ordering, as I've mentioned, is important. Use cause needs to come before use authentication. Use authentication needs to come before use authorization. And then we've got our endpoints. So what we'll do now is take a look at the difference in the response and we'll take a look at our get user once again. And if we click send, this time we get a 401 unauthorized. And that's because in order to authorize a request, we actually need to send our token with the request. So let's take a look at the login as Bob. And what we'll do is we'll just copy the token into our clipboard that we received from the server. And if we go back to the get user request, which we're getting unauthorized for, now we'll click on the headers and in here we've got an authorization but this is for an old token and what I'll do is just replace this one and the way that this needs to be defined is we have the authorization header then we have the value of bearer followed by a space and then we pass in our token. Now what should happen when we click send again is this time we're authorized and we get the result back of our query. So now we have authentication enabled in our app. If I make a change to this token and I take out the first character, for instance, and click send again, then of course we get unauthorized. And if I change it back to a valid token, then we're back to authorized and our request is accepted. So this is as far as we're going at the moment with authentication. We will come back to this later, I promise. And what we'll take a look at next is tidying up our startup class and taking a look at extension methods.